like their families to be helped. And if they do, then we will approach, visit them, visit the family, and then offer them the various kind of help that the community can provide. This includes immediate uh, financial assistance to meet their daily needs. The We Care program is one recommendation of the Committee on the Prevention of Reoffending to curb recidivism. Volunteers will start visiting families of inmates next month. Separately, there is another help program for inmates. We have set up the Befriender program, which uh, call volunteers from organizations that will befriend them and then become their alternative new friends when they leave prisons. Uh, this uh, has just started. The first batch of 40 volunteers under the Befriender program have just completed their training. Many couples will not choose to register their marriage in the year of the tiger due to superstition that it's bad luck. But exceptions are made for special days such as 20th October 2010, which forms 2010-2010 when written. The Registry of Marriage has received more than 140 submissions from couples looking to get married on that day, more than double for an average day. And this company, specialising in wedding photography, says it has received twice as many requests for its services on October 20th compared to a normal weekday. Restaurants and hotels also advise couples who want to get married on specific days to book in advance to avoid disappointment. Well, that wraps up Singapore tonight. Coming up next is That's IT Uploaded. Timothy Go discovers what some adults get up to with their iPhones when they think no one is watching. Stay tuned. Megan and Danielle are three very normal girls who lead very normal lives. But there is one thing that is not very normal about them. Why don't you talk, Red? They have selective mutism. She has a set of rules for who she can and can't speak to. How can you have a relationship with a child who won't speak to you? Documentary of the Week presents My Child Won't Talk. This Sunday at 7.30pm. The menu today for our Amuse Bush, an established food and travel writer. And for the entree, you would be most pleased with our food consultant. He comes with a touch of humor. And for the perfect end to the meal perfectly, we have Peter Kniff, who needs no introduction. And they are the judges of the perfect meal Asia. Bon appetit. Star Search 10, a glamorous stage for the young to pursue their acting aspirations. Celebrate our 10th anniversary as we step into the crowd from China, Taiwan, Malaysia to Singapore. Scouring the streets in search of the next big star. Star Search 10, Regional Hunt, debuts 30th August, Mondays, 8pm on Channel 8. 2020年中国西部开发进入第二个十年前十年的大开发中中国西部得到了怎样的发展取得了怎样的成绩在接下来的十年中中国西部将继续给投资者带来怎样的投资价值与机遇以及对中国经济带来怎样的影响敬请关注
what's very interesting is when you look at Apple, uh, a lot of what Apple was doing, particularly in the first couple of versions, the initial few versions of the iPhone, was actually technologically very, very backwards. Um, at that point in time, it wasn't 3G, it didn't do MMS. Uh, they didn't, keep in mind, they didn't even allow application development at that time. And to the point where Apple's been getting all the credit for being the so-called benchmark of smartphones, when the reality is, from a technological perspective, they're actually a bit of a laggard compared to the likes of Nokia and so forth. Um, fast forward a few years, now these days, one could make a much stronger argument for that, uh, for Apple being a benchmark. Okay, now that we've established that Brian is not an iPhone fanatic, we can now proceed with the battle of Android versus Apple. On the OS, the two systems are poles apart. Apple is elitist, while Android is open for everyone. Okay, so when we look at the Android OS versus the Apple iOS, in many ways you could kind of think of these as polar opposites to each other, right? Um, Apple, of course, keeps everything very tightly integrated. The OS, um, the various applications that can be written to that. Um, and then you compare that to Android, which is, of course, an open source platform, a lot of various vendors and that sort of thing. Um, you know, there's different user interfaces. It's up to the individual which one they prefer. Um, you know, arguably both of them do a pretty good job at trying to make the experience on the phone fairly friendly, um, as well as, of course, allowing developers to create good, powerful applications. When it comes to the variety of useful apps, Ryan thinks it all boils down to personal preference. One Apple app we find extremely useful may not be all that thrilling to the person next to you. In many cases, you're going to find very, very similar apps or the same app that's ported out to uh, various OSs as well. So it's not necessarily to say that one is necessarily better than the other. I think they're just different operating philosophies. But when it comes down to the user's perspective, uh, there are likely a number of users who will show a bit more of a preference towards Apple, you know, for the same reason that Apple is so protective about its apps. So who's winning? It is not easy to keep track. Perhaps when it comes to available hardware, one will emerge victorious. You know, with that Google model, you have the ability to create a wide variety of various types of hardware, uh, which in and of itself can be an innovation, um, or rather can generate a lot of interesting designs. And that's really the, the beauty of it too, right? You're, you're gonna see a lot more interesting devices rather than just those one or two designs that Apple may have. But then again, those one or two designs that Apple has are huge, tremendous hits. So it might not necessarily be a numbers question either. In many other cases of consumers, they actually don't even care what the OS is. And for those cases, they actually look more at the hardware design, right? How does it physically look? Is it something that does a job? And can it plain and simply make phone calls for them? According to most market research, Android phones grew its market share at the end of Q2, and depending on which data you're looking at, some suggest it even leapfrog over the Apple iPhone. Well, it's partly because a lot more third-party smartphone manufacturers are using the Android's open system. Now, here's an interesting story I came across a few days ago. Adult entertainment operators are now apparently looking into the iPhone 4's FaceTime application to make some more money. I wonder why. If you recall, we told you all about the iPhone 4's FaceTime function, a video chatting app you can use whenever there is Wi-Fi. Video chatting is not entirely a new innovation in smartphones, but Apple managed to make it simpler and cheaper. One tap and you are connected to the ones you love, as long as they have the iPhone 4 and connected to Wi-Fi. Dreaming about this, you know, dreaming about video calling, and, and it's real now. But now I wonder if, in his wildest dreams, did Steve Jobs ever expected the enterprising adult entertainment industry to take advantage of FaceTime? The portability and privacy of a mobile phone makes FaceTime a new frontier for the industry. But using a smartphone for this service has its drawbacks. The only reason why I'm skeptical is because, yes, girls can still do it even with the new apps coming out where it's like Skyping and you can go from your phone to your computer. But when you're webcamming, ultimately, when you do it at home, when you have your computer, you can bend the camera and you get the full picture, the whole ambiance of the background, whether you decorate the room or the bedroom. 
and with FaceTime, because the camera is so small and it's on your iPhone, you can only get one part of your body, like you can only get your face or just your arm or your chest. The irony of it all? Well, Apple is positioning FaceTime as a wholesome, family-centric technology. But if things work well, then the adult entertainment industry will end up driving the sales of the iPhone 4 and ultimately, the use of FaceTime. And now for a roundup of news from the world of IT. Research in Motion's position may be in limbo in some parts of the world, but that didn't stop the Canadian company from launching its latest handset. The BlackBerry Torch made its debut in New York a couple of weeks ago. It is a new and improved touch phone, which comes with a QWERTY keyboard underneath the slide. The new slider form factor is a huge gamble for RIM after its much maligned storm in 2009. But with this one powered by the new BlackBerry 6 OS, things are looking promising. The Torch is only available with AT&T in the US, at least for now. And guess who is jumping on the internet bandwagon? After setting up his presence on Facebook and other social networking sites, the still popular Philippine president opened his own site, president.gov.ph. It is an attempt to stay in touch with what he calls his bosses, the people who voted for him. We've always asked you for your thoughts on our Facebook page, so here's what some of you have to say about this week's topics. Have a look. On the topic of Android versus iPhone, Ringo says he is sticking to his iPhone. Mark seemed to be enjoying his Android phone, though, but says it still has room to improve, even though it is good enough, he says, for mid-level users. And this takes the cake. Jessica says her HTC dream is more like a nightmare. And when I posted this week's trailer, Chandula says it is interesting to watch, so I hope, Chandula, you're watching this right now. Raymond says he's heard of people watching adult flicks on their iPhones in very public places. And Lei Fang will be encouraging her guy friends to watch. And I sure hope they are. Well, you guys are doing a great job, so keep those comments coming in on our Facebook page. And do follow us on Twitter. That's all I have for you this week. I'm Timothy Go. That's it. Cancer is a terrible ordeal, but with today's remarkable medical developments, patients are presented with better options to cope with the disease. The medical landscape has become very exciting with many different prospects and options that we can offer our patients, be it this in the form of keyhole surgery, robotic surgery, different drugs, radiation techniques. Join a panel of specialists as they reveal the latest advancements in treatments for breast cancer, rectal cancer, and lung cancer. Plus, get an insight into cancer clinical trials. Learn about the best treatments available and get expert advice on winning against cancer. A seminar happening on Saturday, 28th August at the SunTech Convention Center Theater. For more details, log on to channelnewsasia.com slash seminar. Brought to you by the National University Cancer Institute, Singapore. Supported by, organized by Channel News Asia and supported by this pro. It's about living your greatest sporting dream. It's about pushing the boundaries. It's about daring to be different. It's about letting your voice be heard. No limits, no distance, no fear. Channel News Asia. Central Singapore, near Little India.
A rush hour crowd is forming. 